In the COSATU news headlines today, COSATU makes submissions to Parliament, the NUM matches against retrenchments at Diro Mangani's mine, and COSATU holds its Central Executive Committee meeting. The Congress of South African Trade Unions presented its submissions on the 2017-18 budget to Parliament's Finance Committee's public hearings on Wednesday, the 1st of March at the Old Assembly Chamber. Some of the key focus areas that COSATU raised included the need to oppose any value-added tax increase and tax increases on the working and middle class families, to increase support for job creation, economic stimulus and reindustrialization, and to end outsourcing, privatization and labor broking, as well as provide free quality basic education and tertiary education for the working class families. COSATU also wants government to abandon the unaffordable expansion of nuclear energy. The National Union of Mine Workers marched to the Diro Manganese Mine outside Post Musburg in the Northern Cape on Tuesday to protest against retrenchments at the mine. According to the union, the mine has been retrenching workers without an agreement on severance packages. Retrenched miners claim that they were unceremoniously dismissed via SMS. National Union of Mine Workers Regional Secretary Cornelius Mane said that some workers had not been paid their salaries last year for more than five months. The workers have been out of work since receiving retrenchment messages via their cell phones in December 2016. The mine's representative indicated that there have been talks of a possible meeting to discuss the workers' grievances. The workers have also accused the mine of not compensating workers who were injured at work. NUM Regional Secretary Cornelius Mane had this to say. Members of NUM uh, March to Diro Mine, issues who are on the memorandum amongst others were the issue of retrenchment, whereby the company retrenched our members without, or, although we have not completed the agreement. And the other issue is the issue of pay. Since last year, the company didn't pay our members for plus minus five months. So we have handed over the memorandum. If the company cannot respond as we want, then we are going to take another route. And we thank our members for participating for making this happen. Thank you. The Congress of South African Trade Unions held its Central Executive Committee meeting this week from Monday until Wednesday to discuss a number of issues that affect its members. Some of the issues discussed include the introduction of a wealth tax that will help fund free education, the Federation's opposition to the proposed sugar tax, as well as the demand for the extension of the 2018 deadline for the compulsory annuitization of workers' provident funds. COSATO also stood firm on its decision not to sign the National Minimum Wage Agreement before consulting its members and called for an annual increase to be included as part of the National Minimum Wage Agreement. Spokesperson of COSATO, Ciso Pamela, gives an overview of the meeting. Uh, the three-day CEC focused on how are we going to strengthen the engines of the Federation so that uh, these uh, unions of course, that you can be able to service workers. We are going to do this by encouraging workers to recruit more of their colleagues in the workplaces uh, so that we can develop the, our strength in numbers. Uh, secondly, we are going to intensify the Back to Basics campaign. Uh, all affiliates are expected to visit workplaces to listen to what workers have got to say and uh, resolve some of those issues. Uh, thirdly, we have uh, an agent priority really in defending our jobs in pushing government to put uh, measures in place so that we can have a jobs plan and we can convene a job summit and then we can ensure that employers are not allowed to dismiss workers without really uh, uh, looking at all of the alternatives available at their disposal but lastly as we approach 2017 there are a number of companies that we are going to have to uh, focus on the issues of national minimum wage we are happy with, with the progress that have been made so far but there's a campaign uh, ongoing about the living wage. We have to 
uh, make sure that we have got national health insurance implemented. Uh, we have to look at the public transport system because most of the workers are spending more money on public transport. We have to attend to issues of electricity prices because more workers are struggling to keep up with the price and the price of food, food security. So there are a number of issues, the number of campaigns that we need to embark on as the workers this year. And the CC has given us a clear mandate that we can only do this if we are united, if we intensify our recruitment, and if we've got bigger and stronger unions. Lastly, a section of the roof at Charlotte Matlake Academic Hospital in Johannesburg collapsed yesterday afternoon and a number of people sustained injuries while others had to be rescued after being trapped under the rubble. Concerns have been raised in the past about the structural integrity of the building in a 2012 report warning the X-ray department to be evacuated as it could potentially collapse. However, the province's then chief engineer, Tsepo Matekane, described the initial report as alarmist and insisted that the problem was merely a localized issue caused by the building settling in the 1980s. Meanwhile, Trade Union Democratic Nation Organization of South Africa had much to say about this. Denosa Communications Manager Swangiseni Delklazo elaborates on the matter. Well, as the organization, we say proactive oversight over health and occupational measures in facilities should take priority. What has happened um, in the case of Charlotte Matlaga Hospital, we feel, of course, it should have been prevented because in whatever scenario, when there's a development going on or a construction underway, we feel it should be the responsibility of both the Department of Health as well as Public Works or Department of Infrastructure Development, as is the case here in Gauteng, to ensure that health and safety measures are in place during such construction so that lives do not get injured, people do not get injured unnecessarily. We, we, we have a serious concern over the dilapidating infrastructure in our health facilities countrywide. And what has happened in Gauteng could easily happen anywhere else in the country. So we hope that this has been a lesson to all other departments in other provinces to ensure that when they commission the construction, either a revamping of their facilities, issues of health and safety are taken into account and therefore are not only left to the service provider, therefore also oversight by the departments concerned must take priority in those provinces. And that is all the labor news we have for you today. Happy Friday, comrades.